Hi, Bob Seaman here, and I want to share a story with you. It's called The Three Miracles. For the last few months, I've been wearing a uh, glove on my hand here, and it holds a pad. And the reason I, I, I wear that glove with a pad is my arm was severed in 1984, and uh, the fat and the muscle never really came back, and so now I'm hitting the nerves in here, so the pad in the glove just protects that and uh, keeps me free of pain. The sleeve that I wear, I wear it just in the winter time, is just to keep my arm warm. Blood doesn't circulate quite the way you'd like it to. So people would ask me in the supermarket or wherever, hey, what happened to your arm? You know, they see that glove. And I hate to just tell it real quickly, so I thought, well, you know what? If I videotape it, I could give a little card and say, here, I want you to hear the whole story. Rather than just make it uh, a real quick, oh, I cut my arm off. Because it didn't make any sense. And really, it's such a miraculous story, I want to tell it to you. So here it goes, the three miracles. Before I tell the story, though, let me just uh, uh, show you my arm. Here, here, here's the arm all reattached and uh, ready to go. My grandfather and my dad started in the gas station business years ago. And in the late 60s, uh, they developed a truck towing and recovery business. Business was very good, and uh, they finally got out of the gas station, just stuck with uh, truck towing and recovery. So in 1971, my grandfather retired. I bought his half of the business and became partners with my father. Well, April 30th, 1984... Uh, there was a semi rolled over, and uh, it was at I-55 and 1st Avenue, and this is on the uh, southwest side of Chicago. So I went out there with uh, Bill, my mechanic and operator, and myself, we had two wreckers. We ran both the cables out to pick up the wrecker. It should have been a fairly easy uh, pick because it was a container, steel container with corner pockets. When I ran my cable out, I got too much slack in it. And in the fishing reel, it's kind of like a bird's nest, they call it. Well, if you don't straighten it out, you roll your cable up. With tension, you ruin the cable. You start cutting it. So I decided to take the free, uh, excess cable out and straighten it out. So when I did that, I could have called Bill over to give me a hand, but I was in a hurry. Thought I could do it myself, you know, accidents don't happen to me. And uh, that's where I made my big mistake, you know. So what happened was, I put the winch in reverse after taking the excess cable out, ran to the center of the record, and I started guiding the cable onto the spool. It was a windy day. A great big gust of wind came along and blew me. I instinctively put my arm down to catch my balance, and that's when it happened. My coat sleeve caught in the power takeoff, and it wrapped it round and round and round till it snapped off. Well, that's our first miracle. The engine quit running. If the engine hadn't quit running, it would have just killed me. It would have just kept going and going and just tore me to pieces. But the engine quit running. Never in all the years of being in the truck towing business had an engine quit running. When you have a semi in the ditch and you're pulling it out, maybe the front end of the wrecker will go up in the air or you break a chain or a cable, but an engine quit running? Miracle. Miracle number one. Well, the second miracle was Bill came over, my mechanic and operator, he came over to give me a hand. And uh, he wanted to start taking the power takeoff apart. Well, I would have bled to death waiting for all that to happen. I told Bill very distinctively, I said, Bill, put the winch in reverse and start the engine. Well, he was scared to death. He didn't know what the heck was going to happen. Frankly, I didn't either. But he did it, and it was like angels lifted me out and set me on my feet. And there I was, free and clear. I jumped off the bed of the wrecker onto the ground and there a police officer uh, jumped on my shoulder to help stop the, the gushing blood. Well, I wasn't too far from Loyola Hospital. The paramedics took me down to Loyola 
And there it was, uh, I was for my next uh, third miracle. So counting the miracles, the first one was the engine quit running. Second miracle being uh, coming out of there in one piece, landing on my feet like an angel lifted me. The third miracle was the operation. Over at the hospital, the doctors didn't even want to try and put my arm back together. They said, it's a waste of time. It'll never work. Well, one of the doctors, Dr. Pinzer, had a can-do attitude. And uh, so he convinced the other doctors to give it their best shot. Well, so there it began. <clears throat> Nine hours of surgery. There was a doctor that transplanted an artery from my uh, leg into my arm. There was an orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Pinzer. He took steel plates and pins and screws and secured the bones back together. Then there was Dr. Angelis, a plastic surgeon. He had the task of reattaching muscles, nerves, tendons, and whatever else he could do to reassemble the arm. He worked tirelessly going into the shoulder to reconnect everything. He also did the skin grafts taking skin from my leg and put it on my arm. It was only days later that I found out that even after the surgery was complete, they didn't expect it to last. They thought in a couple of days they are just going to have to go ahead and amputate it anyway. I guess they didn't realize how many hundreds of people were praying for my arm. I vaguely remember waking up afterwards, but I do clearly remember the next day. There I was getting yet another blood transfusion and lying there with my arm in a special sling supported by a pole. What a helpless feeling it was to have a part of your body you couldn't control. The nurses would actually have to carry my arm to get me to the bathroom. Well, the doctors were encouraged that I could move two fingers just a little bit. I had a little feeling in my arm, actually. Two days later, it was back to the operating room for more surgery and skin grafts. And at, during the next year, I had four more surgeries, and uh, which included bone grafts. They took bone from both my hips and to get the bone to heal. Uh, another clever thing they did was my thumb didn't work. So they took a tendon from this finger, re rerouted it to make my thumb work. And that's how that works. Well, to this day, my arm's about 98% of a normal arm. One of the side effects of this type of accident is blood circulation is very poor. Thus, the decision to sell the towing business and stay out of the cold weather. Then I went to Union Pacific Railroad for the next uh, 12 years, and then to my jack, uh, where I've been for the last 16 years, the last 10 years as a safety director. So why am I sharing this story with you now? Often the topic of my accident comes up and it's difficult to tell the whole story verbally. I usually leave something out. But it's a really a thrill to see the three miracles that God performed in my life. So I share that with people. On the one hand, I think it sure would have been nice if the Lord spared me this whole ordeal, but the, on the other hand, we're responsible for our actions. The Lord does have many promises that he gives us in the Bible. The one in particular that I claimed was Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good for them that know God and are called according to his purpose. It's important to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and to have the assurance of eternal life. But to know him as your friend as well is very important. Sometimes in life we don't appreciate something until we lose it. And then it's too late. It seems that hundreds of times over the years I'd be playing with my children, picking them up in the air with two good arms and it hit me like a lightning bolt. How fortunate and thankful I was for a second chance in those three miracles. Thank you for listening.